Hey guys, what's up? This is Tony from alphapursuits.com. In this video, we are going to talk about what options are and how the options work. I know there are already videos out there that talk about this topic. So what I want to do is dig a little bit deeper, try to understand what options buyers are thinking and what options sellers are thinking. Now you probably wonder why I have magic ticket in bracket right next to contract. Uh, the reason being, I want to make this uh, be simpler so that kids will be able to understand. Uh, I want to show this to my kids uh, when they grow a little bit older. Uh, but obviously, people want to learn all about options. They, they are interested in trading stock options and future options. So even though I'm going to use PlayStation as the underlying goods to explain what options are, you can just substitute that with stock. Uh, to you know really understand what what's going on in there and, and make it apply to your situation so let's get started so like i said uh let's say playstation costs one thousand dollars today and you want to buy it in one month and the reason for that is because you don't have the money right now so what you do is you enter into a contract an agreement uh, for kids out there a magic ticket if you don't understand what contract is is basically an agreement uh, between two uh, three or, or more people uh, but basically you can go to your friend, let's say Johnson, uh, in, for this for this example, and and tell him that, hey, I want to buy a PlayStation one month for one thousand dollars, but I'm worried that the price of the PlayStation is going to go up. So what I want to do is I want to uh, get into a contract with you. I want to buy a call options from you, and I'll pay you thirty dollars for that. But at the end of the one month, what will happen is that you will have to sell your PlayStation to me for $1,000. Now, Johnson is happy about that because he was thinking about selling his PlayStation and he thinks the price of the PlayStation is either going to stay the same or it might go down a little bit, but probably not that much lower. If it goes down, he's thinking, well, I can just hold on to it. I'll play for an extra couple of months. And when it comes back up uh, you know, to $1,000, I can sell it anyway. So it's a no brainer because he will not only make $30 from you, he will likely be able to sell it at the price he wanted to sell it anyway. That's his thinking. So from your perspective, options buyer, core option buyer perspective, you're thinking the price is likely going to go up. Whereas for option seller, core option seller perspective, Johnson is thinking, well, it's probably going to stay the same or probably it's going to go down a little bit. And so let's say the time comes and let's say the price actually goes up. Okay, it goes up quite a lot to 1,500, let's say. So what will happen is that you go to Johnson and say, well, you know, we agreed. And so you got to have to sell it to me for $1,000, even though right now, if you go to a shop, it costs 1,500. So instead of you going to a shop, you go to Johnson and execute the core contract so that you are able to buy it for $1,000 from Johnson. Now you're happy and essentially you make uh, $470 because you, you it's $1,500 right now market price uh, so you know you, you can turn around once you buy for $1,000 you can turn around and go to a shop and sell it for $1,500 right away uh, there's a $30 contract that you pay for so essentially you make $470 now from Johnson's perspective obviously he in a sense lost $500 uh, because now he has to sell it to you for 1000 Instead, he could have gone to the shop uh, to sell it for 1500 if he had, haven't had uh, got into this contract with you. Uh, but, you know, he's still happy. I mean, he sold it for 1000 which is the price he wanted to sell it anyway. And he got $30. So, in essence, he, he, he made $1,030. So... That, that's, that's what happens for this particular case. But obviously, there, there are different cases which I'm going to explain right now. Uh, so, you know, it, it might change, open up your, your eyes a little bit here because what if Johnson doesn't own PlayStation? Well, what if he didn't have a PlayStation? Okay. So, what he did was he basically he opened a contract with you without 
owning a PlayStation. Now, if that is the case, and and you come to him and say, well, you gotta have to, you know, sell it to me for one thousand one thousand dollars. And what would Johnson do? You would have to go to a shop, buy for one thousand five hundred, and sell it to you for one thousand dollars. So the the difference here between having this PlayStation and not having a PlayStation, okay? So, I mean, it really depends on how much it costs for Johnson to buy that PlayStation. But let's say he, he bought it for $1,000. The first scenario, he lost nothing, okay? Of course, he, he owned the PlayStation when he bought it is $1,000 and he sold it for $1,000. So he, he basically made $30, he lost nothing. But in the second scenario where he didn't own PlayStation in the first place, he would lose $500 because he had to go to a shop to buy for $1,500 and sell it to you for $1,000. So the first scenario when he had PlayStation, that, that generally speaking, that's called a covered call uh, selling. You know, you, you sell a covered call because it's covered uh, because you already own the PlayStation, which it's, it's a much safer strategy compared to selling naked call. So you, you didn't own, Johnson didn't own PlayStation and he was naked. He didn't have a uh, PlayStation. Uh, so, so he had to go out there at the end of the expiration of the contract, buy it, whatever the market price is, and sell that to you. So you can see, uh, you know, yes, it, selling core option could be a good idea if, if you actually own the underlining uh, goods or underlining stock. But if you don't, it could be a very, very dangerous uh, situation there. Now, we, we, we covered the upside. What if it downside? What, what if the price go went, went down? And let's say the price after one month, it goes down to $500. Now, what you do is in that case, you don't need to exercise your contract. You can just go to a shop. You can buy from the shop for $500 because now it costs only $500. Uh, so in a way, you're happy, you know, um, you, you, yes, you, you wasted $30, but that was kind of the insurance you had in case if PlayStation price went up. But in this case, it went down. So you are happy, even though you lost $30, you still, you, you only spent $500 instead of $1,000 to buy PlayStation. So as an option buyer, uh, it could be used as sort of like an insurance. Uh, in, depending on your situation and in most of the time though buying coal is more like speculative you know it allows you to control a much bigger uh, item underlining in this case you spend only thirty dollars control one hundred one thousand dollars so it, it's a it's a very good deal um, but the reason it, it was a very good deal here is because I made it a very good deal um, in reality and this is where we, we're going to talk about what determines that option pricing the option pricing is determined by three large factors one is the underlining equity uh, or underlining goods if you are trading PlayStation uh, for example but uh, so the underlining uh, equity or underlining goods pricing would affect the option price and let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So let's say instead of one month, let's say after 10 days, the price of the PlayStation jumps up to 1,500. Now at that point, if someone wants to open the same kind of contract with Jensen, let's say, okay, that person would have to pay $530 for that uh, contract. Because now it's 1,500 instead of 1,000. Now, if, if for to trade $1,000, to buy for 1,000, you only pay $30. Now it's 1,500. Obviously, you have to add that 500 to, to the option price to uh, make that transaction make sense. And so you can see, you know, depending on what the underlying, how the underlying moves. So if the price drops down, uh, obviously the option price will go down as well accordingly so there's the intrinsic ex extrinsic value uh, of option price which we are not going to get into that um, in detail but just want you to understand that uh, that that affects the option price then there's the time value where you know instead of one month if you say you want to make it three months or one year obviously Johnson would have to get compensated for that longer period of waiting time and that will make the option 
uh, price much higher if the time is much longer. So that's the time value there. Now volatility is really depending on how volatile the market is. So let's say PlayStation, you know, this is PlayStation 5. We are talking about PlayStation 6. Um, seven or eight or whatever uh, and and it's a really hot commodity it's a brand new playstation it just came out a lot of people want it and so imagine you know you, you go to johnson um there are probably other people who want to do the same deal with johnson so you know you you you, you propose thirty dollars but johnson say no hey there are a lot of other people they, they are willing to do 50 60 or 70 dollars with with the same kind of arrangement why should i do 30 with you. you you should raise your price as well so you can see if the market is volatile the option price will likely be volatile, be, be, be much higher as well, because a lot more people want to buy or sell. And, and so uh, that, that, you know, depending on the market condition, the option price changes. And that, that's what volatility is. So those three are the main uh, factors that would affect option price. But there's also actually one more, which I didn't list it here, uh, which is the interest rate. And since the interest rate doesn't change every day, that's why I, I didn't put it here. Uh, these three factors will likely change the option price uh, a lot more compared to interest rates. So that, that's not listed here. So you, what you really need to worry about is really these three uh, from day to day. Okay, so now we covered the call option. We covered the option pricing. Let's, let's go to put. So why do someone... What, why does someone want, want, wants to buy a put option? So the thinking there is you, you're worried about the price is going to go down. So again, use the PlayStation uh, example. Let's say you already own a PlayStation and you don't want to sell it today because there are a couple more games that you want to play for the next month. So you want to sell the PlayStation after you finish those games in one month. And so you go to Johnson and then tell him that, hey, uh, I want to sell my PlayStation to you for $1,000 in one month, and let's get into a contract. So I'll pay you $30 for that. And so at the end of one month, uh, basically, you know, if the price goes down, I will come to you and then you will buy for $1,000. Now, if the price goes up, then that will complete a different story. So let's, let's go with the scenario of when the price goes down. So you, you go to Johnson, you pay $30. And from Johnson's perspective, let's say he's interested in buying PlayStation anyway. He always wanted it. And he thought, well, $1,000 is a fair price because he thinks the price is likely going to go up or stays the same, probably. So he say, well, you know, I'm, I'm willing to wait for one month instead of buying it today. And I, I think $1,000 is a good price uh, anyways. So, you know, you, you will actually bring down the cost for me to 970. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you pay me $30 wait for one month. And if the price goes down, I'm, I'm going to buy it for $1,000, not a problem. So when the time comes, let's say the price goes down to $500, the market price. Now, obviously you are not going to go out there to the shop uh to to any any you know uh, game shop to sell it for 500 you're gonna go to johnson and say hey i'm gonna execute my option contract with you to for you to buy from me for one thousand dollars so johnson buys it from you for one thousand which is the exact price you wanted to sell anyway so you are happy and in essence you made four hundred and seventy dollars the reason being you you pay thirty dollars for the uh contract so you know you, 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 in essence, you, you make five, uh, 470 instead of 500 because 500 minus 30. And for Johnson, he in a way, he lost 500 because he had to buy from you for 1,000. And if he tries to go to a shop and sell it right now, it's going to only be 500. But his thinking, and, and this is one of the thinkings uh, option, put option sellers could, could be thinking, is that, well, I think PlayStation is a hot commodity. It's going to come back up in a few months. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy from you for $1,000. i am going to play uh, PlayStation you know, for, for two, three months, wait until the price comes back to $1,000, and I'm going to sell it at that point. So I'm happy. It's not a problem. So he doesn't feel like he lost $500 because he was willing to wait, and he knew, he was confident that the PlayStation price was going to come back up. So this is actually one of the very 
uh, a common strategy for someone who want to buy the stock even cheaper than the current market price is that they open they, they sell put options and then that they're going to get a premium which is going to bring down the cost of the of the stock that they wanted to buy in the first place anyways you know lower and if it, it happens that the stock price drops down then they get to buy it at a, at a discount and obviously sometimes it could drop substantially and and in that case obviously you know that person would lose some money um, but again he or she may be confident that the price of the stock might come back um, so it's okay for them and and another way to think about this is you can just uh, open this contract with so many other people right and and say you're very confident the PlayStation price is gonna go up uh, so much that even if you open 10 of this contract you are not gonna get assigned so if you do get assigned obviously you have to uh, buy from 10 people for $1,000 so you need to have $10,000 in your pocket ready uh, for for this transaction to happen um, but you, you'll be able to make $300 uh, so you can see you know this is really how you make money by selling put it's like an insurance basically because from options buyer from put options buyer he or she is buying protection okay he or she maybe owns a stock and think well it might go down so i want to protect my investment so i'm going to buy this uh, put option as an insurance and for option seller for put option seller uh, here you, you are thinking well I'm selling insurance in a sense uh, and, and I'm gonna make three hundred dollars if I if I do this with ten other people and you know I, I do have ten thousand dollars in case uh, something goes wrong and I'm happy to uh, hold on to the PlayStation uh, for a few months because I know it's gonna come back up and when it comes back up I'm just gonna sell the ten PlayStations and then get my ten thousand dollars back and again I'm just gonna uh, you know repeat the same thing again and again and keep making the premium of selling the put option so that that's the thinking uh, for put option sellers and for put option buyers you can play the speculation game as well so unlike the earlier scenario where you own the underlining and you are trying to protect when the price goes down what you're doing here is you are buying put option as if you are short selling a stock or PlayStation in this case and you're buying the right for someone else to buy back that item that's got short sell so at the end of the period that someone if the price drops down has to buy back right so in that it's same as short selling a stock or, or a PlayStation in this case and another way is that you can actually sell the option before it gets expired because as the price of the underlining goes down the option pricing uh, of the put option that you own is going to go up so let's say after 10 days the playstation price drops down to 500 and then you go to johnson and say hey i know it's not one month right now but it's already down to 500 um, you're gonna have to buy playstation from me for 1000 so what you can do is you can go out to the shop buy for 500 and sell it to johnson for 1000 and you make 500 dollars right there and 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 but you can also turn around to someone and say hey i have this uh contract uh, and and you know if you buy from me um, you can do the same and go to Johnson and then you're gonna make five hundred dollars so you would have to uh, buy this contract from me for five hundred and thirty so you can see the pricing like I said earlier the underlining uh, equity or underlining goods pricing is affecting the option price so you, you can do this speculative play where you buy it and if the uh, price of the underlying actually drops down then you can sell it for pre uh, at, 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 uh, pr premium and, and so you make money that way so that's really you know how someone make money or someone protect their asset by buying and selling uh, options uh, hopefully this makes sense 
and let me just make sure i think we talk about the pricing dropping down and then what if the pricing goes up now if the price goes up obviously you just go to the shop and sell that you don't go to johnson you know if it goes down up to 1500 um, at that point you just go to the shop and sell it for 1500 if you own the stock um, or on, on the playstation and you know the you, you lose the premium of 30 dollars but um it, it's okay because what you worry about is in case the price goes down, that's why you bought the put option in the first place. But the price went back up, um, you know, it goes up, so you don't have to worry about it. And for Johnson, if he goes above 1,000, um, he, he is probably happy, I would say. He made $30. Um, if he really wanted the PlayStation, he might not be so happy because, you know, now he has to go out to the shop to buy for 1,500. But if he uh, was, Doing this just for the money, not really wanting PlayStation in the first place. And let's say he entered that, like I said, with 10 other people, um, you know, and, and so, you know, he could make $300 from those 10 people um, without actually getting executed. He doesn't have to uh, buy it from these 10 other people for $10,000. So he basically made $300. So uh, that, that, that was what would happen if the price goes up. So that's it for this video. Hopefully uh, everything makes sense. If not, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you like the video, please give it a thumb up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.